Yes, I wanted to have flight. This is why I had to fight the Guardian of Gaia. But anyways, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of All the Mods 7. How are you guys doing today? How's life? So in between the episodes, you might notice that we have consumed a decent amount of power, judging by the hole we just made. And just in case you're wondering, this is what I have missed. Destroying the world. Anyways, what is the plan for today? You might notice that in between the episodes, I have been engaged in some construction works. Facing with a dwindling supply of resources, I think our first order of business should be to make a cobblestone generator, or stoneworks factory, or whatever you want to call it. But before we start with the stoneworks factory, we need to do a teeny tiny bit of create. First, we need some cheaty brass using the alloy kilns from immersive engineering, because I'm really not in the mood for automating another mixing bowl recipe after Enigmatica. Why do we need that brass? Well, we need it in order to make a few crafters so that we can get the electric motor, so that instead of using water wheels everywhere, we can just use power. By unlocking this marvelous piece of technology, I am going to remove our metal presses from immersive engineering because yes, they do look incredibly cool, but create is just much faster. And besides, at the end of the day, I think it looks nice. The final item on the to-do list is to make the precision mechanism because we want to make mechanical arms. Why? They just look beautiful. Hello, we're in a different world. Do you remember this one? Actually, the main reason that we are here is that I'm trying to make a cobblestone generator and every design that I see online is kind of ridiculous. Well, ridiculous is maybe not the word, it's just not the one that I want. I know that I had a basalt generator in this world, so I thought maybe we should visit it. Good, my bed is still here. I just remembered we had a lot of buildings. But what we want is here. You still work, right? Yes, yes, it does work. That is good. So the question is, how the hell did I make you? Ah, the ice is over there, then we're pulling it up, and we're pushing it. You can say whatever you want, uh, vanilla is cool. And we should also remember, there are four items in the hopper clock. I remember we had a base in the nether, I just don't remember what we were doing there. Is it still there? Yes. So we are finally back to all the mod 7. So here's what we're going to do. We need to start making a cobblestone generator and I was thinking maybe we can do something like this. Why is it laggy? I don't know, but it's not very important. So if we have a waterlogged stair, yes, very good, water is not flowing. And if I put lava, we get cobblestone. Very good. Now I know what to do. The first thing that we should remember with my stupid cobblestone generator is that if the pistons misfire, uh, we're going to have a problem. Because if there's a cavity underground, it's going to push down the dirt and that's not something that we want. I'm assuming terracotta is something that can't be moved with a piston. You know, the glazed version. All we need is a few water source blocks and obviously a few pockets of lava. Yes, uh, don't you worry, we can steal some lava from here. I'm assuming it does not have to be source blocks all the way, but I'm sure it's going to bug my OCD later on. I think we're good. Yes. I don't really recommend doing this, but if you have the crimson pendant, you can put down the lava first. Otherwise, I don't really recommend this solution. So sticky pistons on the top and normal pistons over here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're finally done. I wanted it to be in the shape of a plate so that we can have a teeny tiny bit of movement around the base. Movement makes life more fun. Essentially, the way that it works is that instead of an Ito Hopper clock, we have a timer from RF Tools, which is set to 3 seconds or 60 ticks. It's going to activate this observer, and then we have two observer lines. The signal which goes through the bottom one is going to be read by these observers, which are going to activate the normal pistons. The signal which goes through the top row are going to be read by these observers, which are powering this block, and well, they're activating the sticky pistons. So if I remove the plate, uh, remember that the piston is going to only push it 12 blocks, and this is why we have 3 over here, and activate the clock, see what happens. Nice, nice. I think it could be faster, 3 seconds is too much. But it's perfect, nobody's misfiring. Okay, so that is the cobblestone generator part, now we need to harvest it, and for that I'm actually going to steal an idea from Ito. I'm not really sure if you remember his TNT factory, but what we want to do, he actually did that with Pistronics, but I'm assuming we can also do that with Create. If we have a mechanical bearing over here and a few radial chassis, add some glue on one side, like so, not that one, and add a few linear chassis like so, we should be able to tell it to pick up, I don't know, maybe three blocks in front of it? Maybe two. I'm not sure if we can do this with a crank, but do you work? Aha, uh -huh. oh, you're the one which is 8. Okay, okay, we set you to 3. 
Yeah, so let us try this one more time. You go back to your position. Now we harvest. Perfect. And this one is going to regenerate. So now it's the part that I haven't really actually thought it through, but we can use a sequenced gear shift, I guess. Uh, so we want you to turn 90 degrees and then maybe have a delay for around 6 seconds and obviously go back to your previous position and rinse and repeat. I added one electric motor with a solar panel and yes, it does work and the directions were also correct. So if I flick the lever, it's gonna pick it up. The delay is too much, I know, and it works. Uh, so what if we put the delay to, I don't know, one second? We try this again. Nice. So I guess the only thing remaining is that we should start mining it. You're facing the incorrect way. Thank you. I'm not exactly sure if we can operate 18 drills or not because these guys are going to take a huge stress capacity, but we're going to test it. I believe we can operate each and every one of them using chains, like so. The problem with electric motors is that they don't really generate that much stress unit and it's actually dependent on the RPM. So for example, this one is at 64 RPM, it's generating 2000 stress units. This one on the other hand, is at 32 RPM and is generating 1000. So that is fine, but the issue is that if you increase the RPM, then these guys are going to work faster and therefore they're going to consume much more stress units. So you're stuck in a loop. You increase the RPM to get more stress units, but you also need more stress units. So I don't know, for the moment we're going to have a few electric motors, but let us give it a test. We give you a redstone signal. I was wondering why it's not working. A tree grew. Okay, that was weird, but we give you a pulse. You should pick it up. You should harvest it. Nice. Uh, where does it fall? That's not good. Uh, but first off, uh, let me fix the electric motors, then we'll figure that one out. So if you make your cobblestone generator and the miners 9 wide, you're going to run into a problem, and that is you're going to need two electric motors for each of the rows. Secondly, I could not really find a solution for the cobblestone, but I guess vacuum hoppers work. It's not vacuum hopper, absorption hopper. My bad. We give you a redstone signal, you're going to pick it up, you're going to mine it, and it goes inside the hopper. And I guess we just export you to the north and you to the south. Yep, into a drawer. Oh, this is nice, I just noticed it. It has a texture. Nice touch. Oh, and by the way, today I also updated the pack and it seems they added sophisticated storage. Seems nice. But the main reason that we are here is that I want to make a few upgrades. And if you guys remember, these are the expensive ones. You need three gold blocks. Okay. Then four diamond blocks. This is supposed to be early game. And then netherite. Okay. It's fine. Do not be worried. We have a decent supply of netherites. You can hold 65,000. And just as a good measure, also avoid upgrade. Or you can add more than one netherite upgrade. Cool. But this is fun. I've been flying a lot and we were out of mana and well... I needed to recharge it. And just in case you didn't know, if you add pumps next to a mana pool, it will charge it up faster. Anyways, I did mention that in this season we are not aiming for efficiency and we are going to aim for anything which is stupid, but this seems to be efficient. It's 3400 cobblestone and in the meantime, I just made those. Cause you know, the whole point of having a stonework factory is to get cobblestone and its byproducts. If we smelt it, we get stone. If we crush it, we get gravel. If we crush it twice, we get sand. If we crush it twice and smelt it, we get glass, and if we smelt it twice, we will get the smooth stone. And we want to make all of them. Since this place is going to make us six products, we are going to have six conveyor belts. So this is the part that we kind of have to do it together because there are going to be so many stupid things involved that uh, even I'm confused. But obviously we have our six conveyor belts, they have not been placed yet, don't you worry. One of them is going to be for stone, then we will do gravel, then we will do sand, obviously glass. And finally, smooth stone. The final line is just for cobblestone itself, so it does not have any machines. Anyhow, each line is also going to get a barrel at the start, which is going to be the input. Obviously, we need to extract them, so here is a funnel. And we need to insert them into the machines, so here is another funnel. The machines are going to need some power, so I have some universal cables. Aha! <laughs> uh, let me relog. I don't know what the hell was that. But we're good. Here is a quantum entangler porter and I'm assuming everybody has power, that is also good. We needed a teeny tiny bit more belts because whenever the machines are done, we want to funnel them inside the central location, where we can pick it up by our train. So here is also the funnel for extraction, and I guess for the moment we just have to configure them. Input, output. By this time you guys already got the gist. The idea is that whenever we want to get, I don't know, for example some sand, we're going to put cobblestone inside this barrel. It will go down the conveyor belt, it will be crushed, it will be crushed again, and 
then we will get sand. The same goes with stone, gravel, glass, and you know, so on and so forth. Okay, do you think that was the stupid part? No, the stupid part begins now. Because this is how I want the base to work and well, we are going to use Corporeal Network for it. As you guys already know, Corporeal Network is an inventory management system and automation system from Britannia and it's really fun. All you need is a few Corporeal Sparks and a Master Corporeal Spark. The Master Corporeal Spark has to go on top of an inventory, like a barrel, and you shouldn't really put anything inside this barrel itself, uh, this is basically your ME controller. But if you have another barrel with a normal corporeal spark, you can deposit items inside. For example, dirt. You can request it using the corporeal index, but you can also use one of these corporeal crystal cubes. Uh, we put a spark on top, we specify that this one is for dirt, and we have 17 dirt. Because you know, there are 17 inside the barrel. And you know, if you left click, you can just take it out. But that is the basics of corporeal. The way that we want to use it is the corporeal funnel. The funnel also does require a spark, uh, we put a barrel on top and we're going to specify that we want it for dirt. I just need one dirt. And you know, since it's Botania, you need to use an item frame. But if I press the button, we should get one dirt. Not inside the barrel. Uh, yes, that was my bad. Uh, the barrel has to go under the corporea funnel. But whenever you press the button, you get a dirt inside. You see, every time that I'm pressing it, we get one. And if we rotate the dirt inside the item frame, we're going to get more. This time we got two. And you get the gist. If you turn it more, you're going to get more. And I think it goes to like, I don't know, one stack? Let's get a few stacks of dirt. And we try this again. Is it one stack? That's 48, so one more time. That is one stack. So why is the corporeal network important? Because, well, we're going to put it on top of these barrels. And you might notice my boo-boo, I thought they were going to go under it, but, you know, everybody makes mistakes. So what does it mean in practice? Well, at our cobblestone factory, we are going to have a barrel. It's going to receive the master corporeal spark. And I think we should be able to color it to purple. Yes, yes. You know, if you want to have independent corporeal networks, uh, you can color code them. They won't interact. So in this barrel, we're actually not going to have anything, but in the drawer, we have cobblestone. We're going to color you to purple, and I'm assuming we can start with stone. So here is your item frame, cobblestone, and if I press the button, we should get almost one stack of cobblestone in this barrel, which will be smelted, like so. And yes, that is half a stack, so this one. And fear not, the reason that it's not working is that, well, we needed some rotational power. We got the cobblestone, it goes in, it gets smelted, and it's incredibly slow, but we can upgrade it. But we will also get stone. Although doing it like this, if I come here and press a button, is kind of stupid. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use the redstone link from create. Uh, we put one on this side, frequency stone, and we shall put it on receive. Eventually, we are going to have a control room where I can order everything. But if we press the button, we should get one more stack. Perfection. It's like an actual factory. I like it. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, the speed is going to be garbage. I went up ahead, made the additional funnels, and then I ran into a teeny tiny bit of a problem. Eventually I want to start making a train station here, which is going to be our collection area for different resources across the base. A redstone link from create has a range of 128 blocks, and unfortunately, that is more than 128 blocks. We need to change our plans. We're going to go with a screen controller from RF Tools. And may that be a lesson to me not to rely on create that much. So for the moment, I guess it doesn't really matter because I have to make the train station first, but the screen can go over here. We scan it using the controller. Did you find one? Well, I'm guessing you found it. You're just finicky. We need to have six button modules and I guess a few redstone receivers and we just need to link the buttons like so. I should remember that this one is cobblestone. And if we press the button, we should get one stack. It's a long distance, but yes. I made the second one for stone, let us give it a test. Did you notice that I made a boo-boo? So the cobblestone works, the stone one does not, and the reason is right over here. They're all cobblestone. Because yes, it's going to give us different items, but it needs to extract cobblestone. Now do you work? Ah yes, finally. I told you, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world. Also, my dearest pack developers of all the mod 7, just in case you're watching, you can't break this. And if you do manage to break it, it's gone. I just wanted to mention it in case someone is watching. After a lot of flying between our cobblestone generator and over here to our screen, uh, well, I think we have something. The idea is that we're eventually going to have a control room with our applied energistic system where I can also order the items that I want using screens. The items are going to be processed at various locations around our base and are going to be delivered to us by a train. So for example, if I want to have a stack of glass, I can press a button, one stack of gravel, 
one stack of sand. I can also spam the button, but you know, we're getting them. So now that the factory is working, now we need train tracks. Um, this is the center. It seems to come to here. Okay, then we're going to start digging. The locomotives that we have from Little Logistics, as well as the barges, can accept a GPS coordinates, meaning that they're going to go to a pre-designated destination, which is really good. That means that whenever we have different factories around the base, for the moment we just have one, we can have some sort of a train logic. But as I have already mentioned, for the moment, we only have one destination. So my train logic is just this. Also, I have been trying different methods of interacting with the docking rails, which are used to load the train, and apparently the only item that works with them is the hopper. You know, from the little logistics mod, and well, I could not use a logistical sorter or xnet. I don't really like the look of hoppers because, you know, those ones I can hide, but these ones are going to be visible. So if you have a way around it, or maybe my understanding is wrong, please let me know. Anyways, that being said, until I receive your comments, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a depot, a few funnels, and a mechanical arm to load the train, like so. We also need to order some garbage, glass is useful, maybe some sand? And just as a very small clarification, I'm not incredibly wealthy, so speed upgrades are a pain. Later on, they're going to be fully upgraded. But we are getting some resources, they're going to be deposited into the barrels. The train is going to come and pick it up, hopefully. Yes, yes. You're adorable. And we did manage to get some garbage, that is good. And eventually we are going to have a train station over here, which is going to be the center of our logistics. But, uh, you know, for the moment we just have hoppers. The train is going to unload. And did we get anything? Yes, yes. Very good. Also, just before we wrap up today's episode, there are a few things that I need to mention. One is that, yes, I do need to make a structure for this and turn this into a factory. But the problem is that I spent a ton of time on making this structure over here, which was supposed to be my wood farm. And you know, it's not really small, so it took some time. When I was making this, I realized, yeah, I need to have a stoneworks factory. So we have a factory without a building. We have a building without a factory. That cancels itself out. So in the next few episodes, yes, we are going to have a wood farm over here, and I'm also going to make a building for this. Don't you worry. Another point is that this is not supposed to be efficient. It's supposed to be fun. And it's supposed to bring a teeny tiny bit of life to our world by making it more interactive and with moving parts. And finally, there was a comment that for the heat exchangers, I should make a chimney. I like that idea. At first I thought we'd go with these chimneys, but the smoke is insignificant. I have a feeling that this is how you do this in vanilla? What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I would say that is a far better smoke. So you might notice that I'm not really great at making chimneys. And here is the result. On a positive note, we have smoke. But then I was like, yes, you guys did manage to come up with an idea how to get rid of the steam. But what about water? Because, you know, the reactor needs water. I do understand that we have a sink, but, you know, a pool of water is not going to hurt. How did I make a square without any center? Yeah, I would say this is much better. We just have to fill it in. And then, you know, add a few pipes, some scaffolding, and maybe a catwalk. Why not? Catwalks are nice. I'm not an engineer, but I believe they need some reinforcement and obviously some safety. I wouldn't really know why you would come up here, but just in case you do, there is a catwalk. Next episode, I also want to start automating some food because, you know, I like my kitchen and I really want to try using Ars Nouveau for it. Oh, there is a new golem. Nice. But let us get focused. If we want to get into Ars Nouveau, we're going to need source gem. And in 1.18, there are no source gem ores, but there is a garbage method of getting it early game using the imbuement chamber. I think we're going to have to. This is going to take a tremendous amount of time. This is why I wanted to start it a bit earlier. If you give them source, they are going to be much faster, but early game, you don't really have that much source. Let me correct myself. You have no source. Now you can convert blocks of amethyst. I thought the chamber is going to be smart. The problem is that if you put a hopper under it, it's going to extract the item, which is not good. We just want a source gem. So for the moment, I'm just going to use logistical sorters and set a filter. That should work. Yep, that is good. Another very important point is that I did mention that I updated the pack today and, well, they added Hexerai as well as Evilcraft. I have already done a ton of exploration, but I guess we need to start finding new chunks. For Hexerai, it's going to be easy. We just need to find a swamp 576 blocks away. Have I been there? Oops. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Nature Compass always teleports you to the wrong location. And these are old chunks. We can't find a Hexerai village. This is a jungle, but it has mahogany. We take it. 
If possible, we are also looking for some dark gems from evil crafts. I know that was cool. Oh, yes, dark ore. And we get the dark gem. Nice. Oops, where did you come from? <laughs> oh, and by the way, they also added blue skies. So maybe we should mark this on the map just in case we want to go there later on. I have traveled a fair bit and yes, we're also looking for these. They're also from evil craft. Set foot in a catacomb. I like that. Well, the main reason that I was traveling was to be able to find a new swamp. Oh yes, I finally found it. It's just one building. No, there is more. I was also hoping that we managed to find a village so that, you know, I can get my robes. I don't like armor that much, but I guess this will do. Well, at least I have my hat, but we do get every single item that we need in order to craft the rest of the robes. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.